Okay, in today's video what we're going to be talking about is um, basically using a gearing. So say you want to, in, um, say for instance in the course, right, we went through and we geared the axis, the slave axis, which is uh, the physical axis, to the virtual axis. Now, uh, when we gear these, um, and in the current state I'm in, uh, the servo is um, already on for the sake of uh, time. Uh, so it's in a state four, right? So um, say we want to gear these um, and then start running. Well, the way we have our controls over here for our master, our virtual master, is the, the gear or the master will start running immediately as soon as we either a gear or we use our, <clears throat> we use our camming um, that we have put in place. So um, with that said, right, so um, as soon as I, I do this HMI gear it's going to actually start running so what I've done is I've actually built a trend um, to show you this now uh, when that happens it's going to obviously these two servos are not in exactly in the same position so say for instance when you start these up right in a natural process you would if you're starting to gear something together you would want them to be in the same uh, you want, want them to match perfectly right so um, how would we do that, right? So if I show you this, you know, right now, you're going to see that it's going to actually, um, they're going to actually run together because they're geared. They are geared together, but they're in different, um, they're slightly different, right? So they're not actually, um, the master axis and the, or the, uh, virtual axis and the axis one, are in a different position, but they are running together lin linearly doing the correct thing. So with that said, they are doing exactly what we were wanting them to do as far as gearing. So how would we correct that? Well, one way we can do it is with an MRP. So what we can do, um, and I'll go ahead and stop this. I'll stop the gear. Okay, so we stopped, uh, let's see, undo that. So what I can do, um, and that shows the axis is stopped now, and you see they're both in the, so one, uh, the virtual axis is in this, um, the position of 148, and the um, uh, axis one is in a position of three, three, uh, 331. So um, with that said, the one thing we can do is, um, uh, a motion um, redirect position which we have up here we've used it so we can what we can do is we can uh, before we do um, a gear like if we issued this what we can do at the same point in time is we could say um, you know we could like program something in the state machine to make um, the motion axis gear happen so first we can do we can actually do this. We can actually come in here and add another wrong. Let's do that. Let's add another wrong to make this a little bit more, uh, you know, so let's actually go in here and do the uh, motion that we want to do. So we want to, <clears throat> we want to get the motion axis redirect or reposition. I'm sorry. So we'll come in here to uh, motion and we'll go to the up top here. You want the MRP and the MRP. So first you have to decide which axis you want to actually match up. Do you want to match up the virtual to the slave or the slave to the virtual? 90% of the time you're going to want to, um, you know, match up your ax your, um, the slave. So then, Therefore, you know, generally speaking, the um, the virtual master of the system is going to be tied into something that is uh, a different servo or thereof. It could be an encoder or it could be something else. So you kind of want to keep that at a constant value and not change that because that's the master of the system. So anyway, you want to um, redefine the position of the um, axis one, which is the physical axis, right? So we're going to go ahead and change that. Um, we're going to go ahead and pick our tags. 
So I'm not sure if we have, let me see, in the control, we may have them. Yeah, I think we do. So I'll add another one, and the type is going to be an absolute. So we want to check absolute position. Um, the position, what we want to do is take the virtual master and then put the uh, actual position in there. Sorry, let's do this right. So well, first off, we want to do command. Um, sorry, the position we're going to do is uh, right here. We're going to put our virtual master's position in here. So we'll come in here and we'll go to access. If you've seen that right there, uh, this is a little tab you can pull down and uh, basically uh, alpha make everything alphabetical order. So what I'll do is I'll do that and get the actual position. And that will actually make... So once I um, I come in here and, and do this, it's going to... If I uh, trigger this uh, HMI Access 1 gear bit, what it's going to do is it's going to take the Access 2 position and match it up to whatever the vir uh, Virtual Master position is. So what I want to do there is actually show that that happened right so before I want to actually gear I don't want to gear until that happened so how would I do that so basically I would say either a it's done or either it's enabled so uh, what you can do is you can come in here and let me get back to here is you can get a normal exclaim open or examine on open and use the done bit if you wanted that's one which this is one way to do it and just basically say uh, do that now so once we do this and I'll show you the trend again so again the trend is showing that the two axes are not matched up and I am running it I haven't stopped it yet so um, when we come back and now when we hit this um, gear what we're going to do is it's going to actually start right okay so now everything's running and it geared so we should be right the position came down and they should be right on top of each other and actually geared together so that's one way to do it um, the the more standard way to do it is to actually have it in two separate rungs which would mean you know basically having like state uh, state one state two state three therefore um, but you can do it all in one rung it, it doesn't hurt anything at all um, just make sure that this is a this bit is in front of here is actually you probably want to be in a safe bet to say you need to do this you need to come in here and put in the en which is the enable so that it can't um, be done multiple times, right? Or therefore you can do, you know, if you wanted to, you can do the done, I mean, however you want to do it. Um, <clears throat> so with that said, you know, as far as this goes too, you can own, I mean, if you wanted to, you could do that same thing here. So you have to be kinda, if you're gonna put them all in the same rung, you really need to be uh, acknowledging the fact that you don't want to hold an instruction true all the time because we are still in the um, we are this rung is still actually scanning so what I'm trying not to do is hold the EN of both of these at the same time because again they could be overriding something or something of that nature so just keep in mind if you're using it in the same rung they will actually um, you know you need to have the proper controls in there this is why I say that properly you know like segment them and as far as state to state what I mean like that is um, you know like we did up here uh, we came in and said okay if, if it, in this state come in here and do this function then move it to move this state into here then if this state come in here and do this this function and then move this state here same thing that would happen down here is except we've already kind of built our state machine so what I wanted to do is show you a rough example of, um, you know, what you can do to um, use, like if you're trying to match, um, 
if you're trying to gear something and you want it to match every single time you gear it, then that's what you would do. Um, so I can, I can actually stop this now. <clears throat> so if I stop the gearing, right, and it stopped everything. Um, so basically right now it's not running. Everything is stopped. Now let's just move the motor. I'll physically just move the shaft of the motor. Okay, so now you see that the, the shaft, the, the, the different, there's a difference in numbers, right? Okay, so I'll cut it right back on. And as I cut it on, see it started right back. See, they started, started right back as far as that goes. Now, what I didn't do is, again, it jumped through here and it didn't, we didn't actually in index this anymore. So, what we have to do at that point is we have to verify that we don't want to gear this is why i say this is important to have a state machine is because all i did was cut the motor back on and we don't want to gear at the same time all right we don't want to gear and then start the, the actual motion over here um, of the virtual axis so the thing about that is is again to verify that this has been done um, so verify that the um, motion redefined position has been uh, accomplished before you actually do that. So in order to do that, uh, let's see, we can actually come in here. We can actually throw this down here as well. Or have these two together is, is for that matter. That would actually make more sense. We can do this, this, and this and, ha and delete this and then bring this back over here because if we want if we want to change the gearing like we, we did before we can just that would still index this right so uh, again we'll stop it so I'll just stop so it stopped the gearing it stopped everything and if I cut the motor off Okay, so let's just look at the positions right now. Right now, the, the motor is off. Both the motors are, are not running, and they're at different positions. So if I come in here and actually cut the motor off, and then cut the motor back on, then I start this, then everything should be running. And they went to the, the same exact position. So I redefined what it, what happened was I redefined the position of the axis one using the position of the virtual master axis, actual position. So I basically told axis one to go to that same position. <clears throat> and then once it did that, it actually came in here and uh, issued the done for this instruction. And said, okay, the IP is not um, not on for the the mag, which is the motion axis gear. And then what it that it did at that point was it geared the, um, the virtual master to the the axis one. And then when it did that, it obviously through here when it, when it starts gearing, it it automatically triggers the jog for the the system. So that's the way I had it set up. So as far as that goes, um, you know, hopefully that brought brought some clarity. If you're having trouble with um, meshing the two, like if you're having trouble, like all the time, like say for instance, something happens or a servo gets moved or you rehome something or something of that nature, and you want to verify every single time that that when you mag or when you you gear something together, that they gear up correctly. Then what you want to do is you want to have a, um, one way to go about it, I would say. I mean, this is not a, a tried and true thing that you need to definitely go this this method. But one method you can do is using this motion uh, redefined position. It's really helpful. Um, and again, I would use more state controls. But it's for the sake of time and not actually taking up too much time of, 
of, of you know building it and rebuilding the whole state machine of this um, this program is we just went ahead and said okay if you're in this you're equal to this this let's just add this you know into the 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 gearing sequence right so as soon as the gearing sequence is ready then we're good uh, and we can we can verify that too so with the stop um, and then the off so this, the state machine is now in a, a system it's off so it's waiting for it to be cut back on right now so two to two so it's equal to two so there is no servo action right and as soon as I cut it on there's is servo action then it moves to four in four I'm not going to automatically gear anymore. It's going to it's going to wait for me to you know change. It's going to wait for me to to cut on the gearing. As soon as I cut on the gearing, it starts running. And you can see that it planed out and then it starts running again. So, that's one way to go about it and you know, as far as the way you you know, just make sure you're using the right bits and stuff of that nature if you want to have it all in the same rung like I'm doing. Um, I would suggest um, the best method to do this is to independently state drive this. Meaning if this was equal to 4, this would come in and after this would be equal to 5. And the, then equal to 5 would be doing this. And then you would carry on with your state machine. But I already have 5 doing something else. So for the sake of time and, and um, redoing a lot of logic and, and you know for that matter I just want to go ahead and put all this in the same rung for the the, um, the mag so we have successfully uh, been able to um, re-gear our gear the um, axis one to the virtual axis our virtual master and sync up the positions properly um, when we gear so that's a very critical thing that um, I think sometimes is often missed because we take an uh, assumption that it's automatically going to be in the same position or either we say no we're not going to use it because we have to home it every time well this is an option to um, not have to home it um, you can actually home to you know to get everything in the right position but just in case you wanted to have a quick on the fly method to do this um, the motion redefined position is definitely uh, an option for you to look into so again, I, I know this video kind of ran long and I wanted to kind of address a few things. So I uh, appreciate your time and um, hopefully the training and everything's going well. Um, some of these videos uh, obviously will, will go on to YouTube as well. But um, for the sake of the course and everything like that, um, you know, we're carrying on to, um, you know, be, you know, this because obviously this is part of the um, the the motion mastery course so i want to make sure that the value is definitely there for the, the people that are taking that uh as well so um you know it's it's definitely something we've uh, we've progressed and, and hopefully the, the training is going well and you're, you're enjoying it so feel free to reach out and uh, submit any questions or concerns and i'll be happy to answer your questions um so again, thank you for your support and hope everything's going well. Thank you.